So I wanted to add a decorative detail to this big red barn. It's really a shed, but it looks like a barn in the backyard and we totally embraced it. And we're like, let's just make it super cutesy. And so I used a combination of fence board and cedar to build a garden box. I ended up tapering my planter so that it has a slight angle on the front, but also the bottom boards I tapered up so that water drained away. Because anytime you're gonna irrigate anything on a building, you don't want the water running down the face of it. So if it's tapered, it'll run down the front and just drip along the bottom. I'm in a garden bed, so there's no problem. It can drip directly on the mulch and that's no issue to make sure that it's secure enough because it's holding water plants and soil it can get kind of heavy so i have a brace on the bottom that i ended up screwing into the shed and on the inside of the shed i went ahead and put a two by four across the top there and that kind of helps hold and disperse the weight as well as putting two by fours down on either side so that that also disperses the weight down and that helps with the overall weight of the planter bed I used three and a half inch screws to go through my planter, through some furring strips, through the shed, and then into the support post on the other side. So it's pretty tight and it should hold the weight of the planter. Uh, to irrigate it, I went ahead and ran a quarter inch uh, tube, a quarter inch drip tube up to the planter, and then I ran emitters in it. It's tied into my shrub irrigation, which goes off about three times a week, which could be a lot for succulents, but because it's a planter and it has shallow uh, rooting space, it's gonna dry out a lot quicker. It's exposed to the elements, so it has air um, leaving from top, bottom, and sides, where if it was in the ground, it would be, uh, it would hold on to a lot more water. So I feel fine about putting it on the same drip irrigation system. I ended up painting it white to create a nice contrast. And then of course I added some diamond details to tie it into the rest of the yard. After attaching the planter box, I thought that the shed could use still just a little bit more. So I'm trying to figure out what type of frame and what scale I want to add to this planter just to give it a little more of a pop from farther away. I ended up painting some two by twos with the Navajo white to match the planter box and then I cut them to size to create a simple rectangular frame. You know what? I actually might need you to hold it. I had to ask my camera guy to hold together the frame while I screwed together the two by twos. Yay. Mm. And then as I brought it over, I dropped it. I thought you broke it. But it didn't break, so I guess we're good. <laughs> I don't know why I like that. But it's simple. After I got the frame up, I wanted to take a step back to just take it in and figure out where I wanted my next pieces to go. If I did the diamonds again, I think it would be a little bit of an overkill. So I decided that I wanted to create some chevrons and I used a one by two and a one by one to create the simple pattern. So we went with the chevrons with the 30 degree angle that picks up the same angle as these, but I just didn't want to like overkill the diamond. So it kind of still talks to it, but it's just a little bit different. This is totally the type of project that I like winging it on the job site with scrap wood and letting it fall together as it should. I had these one by twos and these one by ones just hanging out because I always order a little extra and I'm really happy with how it came together. It really elevated this somewhat boring wall that was actually a big backdrop in our landscape. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you like the chevrons or do you think I should have stuck with the diamonds?